saris, etc. They have nighties. And the nighties that they produce in their groups in India because nighties are what women wear for most of the time and they, uh, they quickly bleach with the, with the sun. So there's a lot of calculation that actually goes into uh, what commodities are allowed to be sold in the market. They're making a profit out of that. But they don't want to go any further. Now what is interesting is this money is the NREGS money. The money that comes into the market is the MNREGS money. And so you have the MNREGS resources circulating within the coastal community because all the people who come to sell commodities in the market are locals, are local fish workers, basically fish worker family. <laughs> so that money that the state sends into this area through the MNREGS circulates right there. So in some ways, the market that the women have created is embedded in that society. So it's a very different, very, it's a very different market and, and there is no way that the local panchayat member can really approve of this because in the panchayat member's idea of the market is a very different idea of the market. The women do not want to be slaves to that market. They want to keep it embedded in their local society. Uh, uh, <laughs> the second thing is, of course, regenerating internal credit networks. That's very important because um, I told you, all these people who receive dowry like in this way, you know, the Palavutu Guli, they usually don't take it to the bank. They circulate it internally. So, there is an active credit circulation of credit. So, most of the excess money that any family manages to accumulate there are circulates within. So, Kudumbashri uh, resources are also circulating like that. <laughs> so, the loans that women get will circulate in the community itself. It, it may be even relent and so on. And thirdly, of course, uh, women use this position to improve their standing with the parish. And it's interesting, one of the women told me that the parish uh, priest is highly dependent on the women for information about the community. All sudden, then the parish priest is an outsider. So in order to know anything about the community, they have to rely on the women. And only women are reliable because men are either drunk or generally, you know, they, they are no, not there. So obviously the women have an advantage there. They are making a very good use of it. So, and they are not pursuing what you would call gendered life scripts, you know, of classical patriarchy. For example, the Lord, there is now women, there are women who say, or superficially it looks like classical patriarchy, but it's not. Like this is one leader who said, no, women are very noisy these days. You know, they have money and they you know they manage the house and um, they keep the men under control and then they get very angry when the men do bad things. And, but now we tell them that they should be calm. You know, they should be quiet and calm. Why? Because uh, there's no point shouting at people who have no, who are drunk, you know, who can't think. So you have to wait till they become sober, so don't shout. So that, that move towards being a calm woman is not dictated by fear of any patriarch. It's, it's rather by the need to control and manage. So it's a very different life script, that is. And more importantly, these MNRG spaces are great as solidarity spaces for these women. So one really funny Shyam Pushkan story <laughs> it was about how uh, one day apparently, the, I mean I interviewed all the nuns in the local convent. So one of the nuns who's a family counsellor uh, for the community, she said that the, it's very difficult because one day the men, many men went to her and complained saying that Amma, this, these women are terrible, they go to this NRGS work sites and then they make fun of us. They talk about sex. They talk about her performance in bed and they all joke and they all laugh. So this is becoming terrible. And for the nun, of course, this is terrible because this is breach of, you know, sacred family privacy and all that. So she went to the work site, met the mate and told her you should. So the mate said she promised. So she said, I'll tell the women as much. I tell the women that they should bring stories here, but then they all still do. So what about, so the mate was helpless. Hmm? So, the, so in the BCC, the next BCC, the, this nun asked those women, okay, I hear some really bad things about you and uh, I heard that, you know, there are women in our community who talk about uh, their husbands in bed, uh, in uh, women's groups, the NMNRJ's groups, 
and then they say that because men are not good enough and then they all laugh. Is this true? And then all the women say, yes, yes, it's all true for the next, not our group. There is another group. I know the other group. You know, in the other group they are all talking. I know. And then all the full details were shared with the nuns as well. Nun as well. And the man was a gas. She said the only way to fight about this group is to ask the next group. So that's how it is. So in some ways, you know, the women managed to evade the surveillance of the church. And the MNRG site is an important place where all this happens. This kind of solidarity and stuff happens. Now, so you know, in one, so in, in both ways you can actually see that this is changing. However, and this is where I want to end and I'm ending on a bad note, because the coming of the port come now changes the entire scene. Because now what you have is full-fledged disposition. And because disposition is not development, please, I think all of you need to, to know the difference. If you want to know what the difference is between development and growth, development is a discourse in which even marginalized groups can have a voice. In growth, no. So what is happening in Virinium now is growth. So, the, in the run-up to the, to the port, all participants were men. All political parties who, who supported the port, who created a discourse of Virinium being the Trivandrum salvation, all of those were men. The TV channels and the press that covered the event did not bother to ask the women. Though even their livelihoods were at stake, so the women were a, were a conspicuous absence, if you notice, in the entire discussion. Which means that women have not been included in the politics of, of uh, resistance as far as the port is concerned. They have not been considered in any of the packages, the compensation packages and so on. So you can actually see, so what, is, what happens then is that far from you know carving out some kind of agency and voice, Within the discourse of growth, women are completely rendered in, are rendered completely invisible and voiceless. So that is really, and the, I want to stop there because that is really, and as students of economics, perhaps it's important for you to take into account seriously um, this whole question. So is growth fabulous? Yeah, growth. I'm sure all of us are great devotees of growth. But what does it promise the poor and what does it promise the, those groups who are actually seriously disadvantaged among the poor is a question that we cannot shut our eyes to. That's where I end. Thank you.